What is going on, beautiful people? I am Lee Hammock, your favorite self-aware narcissist, and welcome to Waving the Red Flag with your favorite self-aware narcissist, Lee Hammock. Boom, boom, boom. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to our Tuesday show. Thank y'all for being with us. First thing I'm going to do is introduce my co-host slash producer, Miss Jessica Montez. Hello, everybody. Welcome, to, welcome, Jessica. I, I was going to say, you can hit the clapping hands for yourself if you want to. A little clapping. Uh... <laughs> Just, um, clap. <laughs> Is that the name of that sound? Golf clap. It's like. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is going on, everybody? So <clears throat> today's topic is while going back to a relationship with a narcissist gets worse. Why does it always get worse, y'all? Why does the toxicity always, literally always get worse? Why does it get worse in these relationship dynamics? Why do, why do things tend to go this way when you're dealing with narcissists and toxic people? Like, And the main reason behind that is because the main reason behind it getting worse is literally because every time you go back, the narcissistic person thinks that everything is okay. <clears throat> they think the more you go back to a narcissist, the more you go back to a narcissist, the more they think that everything that they have done to you is okay. And that's just the crux of it right there. You know, the more you, so this is my, this is how my mom, how my mind works on this right here. Y'all is so is such black and white thinking. If it was so bad, why do you come back? You know, if the relationship is so bad, if the relationship is so bad, why do you come back to it? Like, if I'm treating you so badly, if you are so unhappy here, why are you coming back to me? Why? Doesn't it? It, it sounds super simplistic, doesn't it? It's, really it's super simplistic. There's no or like, that's it. That's is that simple. Like you wouldn't you don't believe anything was ever bad then. Me personally, I think I do think that things were bad, but it's kind of like this weird confirmation bias when you come back that it wasn't as bad as, it, as what you made it, what you might have made it out to be. Because if you were treated so badly, if you were abused so badly, if you were just, you, you know, you have the, if this irreparable damage has been done to you. Why are you here then? You know, if you are so damaged, why, if you are so damaged, what are you doing here? And that's the mindset of a lot of narcissistic people, y'all. That's, that's where it goes to a lot of times. It's just like, if you are so damaged, if you are so, if you're so hurt, what are you doing here? You know? And a lot of times that's how it happens though. So a lot of narcissistic people think that you are okay with the behaviors. And I, so this is not me saying that you are okay. This is me saying that a lot of narcissists think that you are okay because you come back, because you allow us to back into your life because you allow us access. And when I say allow access, it means not blocking them. It means doing everything else. It, it means not responding to messages because if I'm not blocked and I can still send messages, I still think there's a chance. Y'all y'all seen Dumb and Dumber? More <laughs> yeah. like more like one in a million. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the, <laughs> that's the space that it happens in a lot of times right there, y'all. So it, it really, really does. So we're live on, so Instagram didn't come through, but um, yeah, but so we're live on TikTok. I just went live on TikTok on my phone um, and YouTube and Facebook. So if y'all have a question on TikTok, hop over to my YouTube channel and we can see it actually in the comment section. If you hop over to YouTube from TikTok, you know what I mean? So you can put the comments on my YouTube channel because YouTube it just it just works better, y'all. So I I can see you on TikTok. I see y'all. You know how powerful is the block? So, so y'all blocking is cutting off access. Blocking is saying no, no sir, no ma'am, no, no you. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to offend anybody. No, whoever you are, whatever you identify as, um, no you. I'm I'm in control. I stand. I, you know I stand in my power right now. This is me. This is me controlling every. This is me controlling the dynamic. So blocking there's a difference between no contact and not responding no not responding means hey i can see the messages you can send them to me but i'm just not gonna respond to them that, that's not as effective as just blocking it and cutting off the ability to do that or just being realistic with you you know 
narcissistic people want to wear you down, y'all. They want to wear you down to the point where you just feel like you can't. They want to wear you down to the point where you feel like you have to use. It's easier for you to give in. You know, it's easier for you to just give in. Give me what I want. Give them what give them what they want and whatnot. That just makes it easier. So the next thing we're going to do, y'all, is hop into story time. Y'all we have a, a story sent in from one of our guests. Uh, one of our members sent in a story. And we're gonna break. We're gonna read it and break it down. So it's time for story time with Lee. Now sit back, get comfortable, and listen while I help make sense of your story. So I love that uh, that little. What do you call that? Sting. Sting. I love that sting. Shout out to Jessica for the the, the sting, the little bee sting. Um. <laughs> so. Today's story it says, <clears throat> I gotta crack my fingers for this one, y'all. And my neck. I like to share my story with you. I'm 53 and previously married for 30 years. 30 years, y'all. 30 years is a long time to be married to anybody. You know, 30 years. I'm 38 years old, y'all. So I was eight years old. Ooh, that is a yeah. That marriage had issues, but it's not the topic at hand. Okay, okay, can okay, candy. In 2015, I got involved with an activism group through my son. I met quite a few nice people during that time, many who are still my friends today. Among them was a man named David. David, David, David. Not, not this is not the um, this is not the David that battled Goliath. <laughs> this is the yeah, this if this, if this was David, this is the David that helped Goliath. This is this is the David that would help Goliath work out and fed him and set, you know, set up his fights and stuff like that. This is that David. <laughs> this is not the the the, the, the hero David right here. Um, this is not the one with the slingshot. This is the one that gave uh, Goliath the sword or whatever he used to tear people up. Um, <clears throat> he he is my age and was part of the leadership of the group. We became very good friends. Okay, okay, good friends. I can see that. Working together closely on projects for the group, we talked on the phone multiple times a day, and I was closer to him than some of my female friends. Okay. My marriage is already in trouble, but my husband, my ex-husband, I decided to work on it, and he transferred jobs, which moved us moved us to another state. I kept in touch with David for a while until my then husband expressed his concerns about the relationship. So I told David we couldn't talk anymore, and we parted as friends. Okay, David respected some boundaries right there. Y'all see that right there? David respected some boundaries. I don't want to shout out David because y'all will see y'all will see what coming up next. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to shout him out. You know, if, I, if this is my first time reading it, I'll be like, shout out to David for respecting boundaries. Good for you. Like you know, green, right? that so like, what? That seemed like a green flag. It seemed. <laughs> what are you at? See, <laughs> it it does seem green flaggy. That's a green flag. Respecting boundaries is a green flag, y'all. So shout out to David for for, for right then because I know what comes next. Shout out to David for right then, but like you can see the green flag, but like creeping in is is <laughs> creeping in at the bottom is a red flag. You know what I mean? Uh, so shout out to him for, for right now. Shout shout out to him right now. You know, <laughs> um, he respected those boundaries. Five years passed with no communication, but I moved back to the area, Houston. Okay, Houston. So this is weird, y'all, because like so I'll say this real quick, y'all. If anybody were to, because I've talked to thousands of people over the last three years, if anybody were to just say, "Hey, Lee." What do you think the narcissistic toxic toxic epicenter of the United States is, or the world, pretty much? I would say Texas. <laughs> Texas is a hot spot for narcissists. I'll be real with it. the most people. I like where are you from? It's like, oh, Texas. Uh, oh, mm. <laughs> and look, if you look at my analytics, matter of fact, I checked my analytics. Somebody said Texas on oh, 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 TikTok. Um, I checked my analytics today. <laughs> the most followed city <laughs> for me is Texas. Uh Texas is my most followed city. It's just funny. I mean, not my, uh, Houston is my most followed city. Texas is my most followed state because it's Houston. And then I think it's L.A., Chicago, um, New York, and then it's Dallas. So it's two Texas cities. Y'all, y'all just y'all are hot. stop dating in Texas, y'all. Um, do do background checks. Background checks before dating should be mandatory in Texas right now. Background check. Back background checks in Texas. Um, <clears throat> I moved to Houston where David resides. December twenty twenty. By fall of 2021, I was very, I was in a very depressed state and had decided that my marriage was the source of my unhappiness and trying to figure out a way to get out. Okay, y'all see, y'all see where I'm going with this, right? 
Somebody said that's why I'm single in Texas. Go ahead and include include Austin. Austin, I had a meetup in Austin last year. So I know Austin is a hot spot as well, y'all. I know Austin. Austin might not be red hot if it, you know. Austin is not a ghost pepper. Austin is like a you know, what's what's less than a ghost pepper? Yeah, habanero, like a habanero. <laughs> yeah, jalapeno, habanero. Yeah, Austin is a habanero, a jalapeno pepper. Like Houston, it seems like a ghost pepper. <laughs> um, it's in that space. I ended up with communication with David again via social media. Surprise, surprise. Okay, David. David's there when you need him. Y'all see what happened right there? David is there when you need him. We messaged for a while, and then I called him. He was always such a good listener to me, but I, but I'd never broken down and cried to him before. He was gentle and understanding. And in the course of the conversation, I admitted that I'd always been attracted to him. But I kept him in the friend zone because I was married. He admitted to the same. Y'all see how David, see, David, I was cool with you. I was green flagging you until you admitted the same. You know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? Just it just, but this is what happens in toxic relationship dynamics, y'all. A lot of times they become good lists. This this is what people I think people overlook. So many people think the narcissists are so self-obsessed and so self-absorbed that they think that narcissists are always just going to focus on themselves and talk about themselves. A lot of narcissists are super analytical and extremely good listeners because they're, they're information gathering. How do you think they love bomb you? They can't love bomb you without, without knowing you. It's just like they listen very well and they let you lead. They let you lead them to where you want to go. It's just like, you know, David, I've always, always been attracted to you. And it's just like, Ding. <laughs> me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I was waiting for you to say it. I was in a friend zone, but I liked it. So, okay, y'all. Mm. So, precursor. If you're dealing with a narcissist, whether you are married or not, and you friend zone them, they take that as a rejection. So, just to get y'all heads up, they take that as a rejection. Men and women narcissists take that as a rejection. If you if you friend zone them, whether you are married or not, they take that as a rejection. I promise you they do. You know, so. And if they do that, does that mean they kind of now want to punish you? Yeah, uh, yes, they do want to punish you. So if you friends on them or you put them on a the back burner or you reach out to them years later when things are going downhill, they will get you back. Mm. You know what I mean? And this is where, like, you if you're dealing with a nice guy who ends up being narcissistic, this is why. Like, the nice guy got looked over and they feel like you deserve whatever treatment. You, the, 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 the nice guy, narcissistic person, feels like if you look over them, you deserve whatever treatment that you get right. But also, if you give me a chance now, it's like you like, why are you pick me second? How 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 dare you choose me now? After this shit. So you so now you're on the way out, you're gonna choose. Now you hit me up. Okay, I got I got I got something for your ass. Watch. You know what I mean? That's the mindset. It's just like you hurt me by rejecting me. You probably didn't know you hurt me. But guess what? You chose me second. So I'm going I'm going to love bum you. I'm going to put you first. I'm going to be a good listener. But I'm going to, the, the script is going to flip on your ass sooner or later. I promise you. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> he admitted the same. I'll keep this short in text form. But our initial interaction was only six weeks, which I ended because I caught him lying to me. Six weeks in line. Dave, you already lying. <laughs> David. <laughs> David already lying, y'all. Damn, red flag. Um. <laughs> Almost six months passed, and I was preparing to move to, to North Carolina permanently to be me and my grown sons and my divorce finalized. So shout out, shout out to wanting to move to North Carolina. But North Carolina got some narcissists as well. North Carolina has probably one of the biggest narcissists in the world living there. I'll let y'all figure that out. Uh, <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. Um, a well-intentioned friend put me back in touch with David. And I thought about, I thought all my dreams had come true. He wanted to commit with me. He wanted me to move in with him as soon as the legalities were complete. He loved bombing and I love bombed him back. I now suspect that I am what I now suspect that I am what's called a quiet borderline. Uh <laughs> we were long distance for three months during which I visited for two plus weeks around Thanksgiving. So yeah, y'all see this right here. Well intent. I'm I'm glad she said well intentioned friend put you in contact with him. Well in people. A, a lot of the worst things that happen in the world come with people people with good intentions. I'm going to hook you up with this great person because you deserve the best. And then they end up ruining your damn life. You know what I mean? They end up setting you up and ruining your life together and whatnot. So it just, that does happen quite a bit, y'all. 
she visited two weeks around Thanksgiving. There were red flags. <laughs> he would have wild swings in his temper. He began to talk to me at these times in ways he never talked to me in all the times we've spoken as friends. Despite that, a month after my divorce was final, I met him in Tennessee at his brother's place, and he returned with me to help me pack and drive the two days back to Houston. So, damn. Despite the, despite the angry outburst, despite the angry outburst, he decided, she decided to still move out. When they show you who, who, who said that, Maya Angelou, when people show you who they are, believe them. Believe them. Got it. Yeah. Why, why don't y'all believe them? Why don't y'all believe people's actions? I, I feel like that's the mistake that so many people make. You believe people's words over their actions. Actions over words, y'all. Actions are dense. They're thick. Actions over words. <clears throat> Things change very quickly. His attitude towards me shifted, and he would frequently yell at the top of his lungs if I disturbed his sleep. He stays awake most of the night and sleeps all day. Is this where third shift? Everything I did began to be wrong. I wasn't allowed to bring half my possessions into his house, even though he'd helped me pack my cargo trailer. I lived with him for two months, and most of my stuff never made it off the trailer. Damn. Things change when you move in, y'all. Things change when you move in. When you cross that boundary of moving in really quickly, when you ignore the red flags, I'm telling you, things change very quickly. Because now they feel like they have you trapped. You didn't gave up your lease. You didn't sold your house. Whatever the situation is, you didn't move across the country to be with me. Now I got your ass. Again, the resentment from when you chose me second, when you put me in the back burner, here comes the resentment. The flame is lit now. Things change. Now he's screaming at you. You know, good God. Mm. I discovered his use of alcohol was well beyond what I, could, what I could have imagined. And there were other substances involved, which I could, was completely unaware of until I moved in. Yeah. You're not, y'all, you're not going to see the needle and all that stuff over Zoom. They're going to hide that stuff over FaceTime. You mean they're going to be in the bed with the pillow in the background and the, the cat poster? Right beneath the camera is a needle <laughs> or pipe or lighter. You know what I mean? <laughs> something's, something's beneath the camera. You know what I mean? Uh, BPD women were eating narcissists up. That's actually backwards. BPD women be getting towed up by narcissists, y'all. Y'all be, I mean, it's not a battle, y'all. Stop trying to battle. Don't don't do the personality disorder battles. Um, <laughs> I'm jaded towards narcissists. Um, <clears throat> the end of the relationship happened because his elderly mother, who lives in a small guest house behind the main one, started confiding to me about some money problems. And then David's son had his girlfriend reach out to me for money concerning an overdue bill. By the way, the son lives somewhere else in the rental, but he's still paying the bills for his father's grandmother's house. What? David broke. <laughs> David ain't got no money, y'all. David broke. David. Da oh, so David. Oh, Davy, 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 my boy. Davy wanted the. Davy wanted the sugar mama. Davy wanted somebody to put pay them bills, y'all. Davy wanted so. That's super red flaggy right there. <laughs> they wanted somebody to pay them bills. Dave was just like, you know what? They, they, <laughs> is Dave a gold digger? Did Dave get you out on the first date? <laughs> it's like, wait, you look at David. You're like, why are you so stressed, David? He's like, man, I don't know how I'm, I'm going to pay this light bill this month. Damn. <laughs> look at you like that out the corner of his eye. Man, this light bill, dude, they're going to turn my lights out tomorrow. <laughs> no, <Davey. laughs> oh my goodness david no i didn't mind helping <laughs> i was living there and believe in pulling my weight and i had been doing other things up until then but i asked questions like why was the sam pay paying this bill when david has been running his own business until not long before he was trying to make it he was trying to make the activism thing his new career according to him well, I, what I discovered was that David hadn't worked in any way for years, at least six, if not more. He'd been living off his mother's retirement income in 2021 and had convinced her to take a reverse mortgage on the paid for house for 100K so he could start his activism organization. He spent all the money in 10 months and none on this intended purpose. Not David. 
putting his mama in a carriage house and he living in the main house <laughs> with her money. <laughs> Not David putting his mama in the in the back house, put his mama in the in-law suite, and you got the <laughs> Not David taking our bills in his mama's oh, David. <laughs> David, <laughs> oh my goodness. Mm. Okay, David. <laughs> I confronted him with the lies about his work and other related things. And of course, it was my fault. It's all, y'all, <laughs> when you confront a narcissistic person, it's always your fault when they find out. <laughs> it's, we, we, if you find out, if you find out, if you find out something behind the scenes because you went snooping, you wanted to get hurt. You wanted to get hurt. You, you, hey, if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't have, you ruined, you just ruined our relationship. Because if you wouldn't have looked, if you wouldn't have looked, we would still be doing, we would still be cool, right? If you wouldn't have talked to my son or my mama, my tenant, my mama is my tenant. Um, my mama lived with me. Uh, we would be good. Your nosing this ruined our relationship. You see what I'm saying? Your nosing this ruined our time. And stuff like that. It happens, y'all. I stayed around for three more days, getting the silent treatment or getting my head ripped off or merely touching his shoulder in bed until I decided to leave. No, no, you're not, you know, you're not getting none after you discover my lies. Maybe the world's fastest turnaround from narcissistic relationship, but it ripped me apart anyway. It's hard to reconcile the man I thought I knew all those years of friendship and the one I ended up with living with. There is more to the story, but I can only type so much. Shout out, shout out to her for sending it in, y'all. Seriously. Um, but they present differently in these spaces. They present, they present differently from friendship to relationship. They're going to be different, y'all. Friendship, especially if you friends on me, that's still a, an analytical period for me. If you whatever relationship you get into that you picked over me, if it fails, I got something for you. You know, if that relationship fails, surprise, surprise. You're going to get caught up. I got something for you. How dare you? You know, it's like, how dare you pick somebody over me? But now you're going to come crying to me about everything that person did wrong. So now I have a new Rolodex of what to do right for a little while, at least. I know what not to do. You know, it's like, look, hey, David, my ex used to do this and I hated it. Now I'm like, damn, I was going to do that. <laughs> now I'm not going to. I would never do that to you, girl. Look, you know, I love you, right? I would never. You just. I would never treat you like that. I pay my own bills. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's that weirdo stuff that they do, y'all. Like seriously. But you see, she had left the relationship. She went back into it, and it got worse. And she went. She left. Moved back. Tried to move across the country. Moved back into it, and it got worse, y'all. The more times you go back into toxicity, the more chances you give them. The more red flags that you look over. It's kind of like going through the jungle, y'all. It's kind of like going through the jungle of red flags. It's just like you moving the red flags out the way. You you trying to find love through the red flags, y'all. You can look over here. It's a clear pasture over here. Go over there. You know what I mean? Go over there. It is wildness. <laughs> he pulls out the flags. Yeah, I got it's the show is called Waving the Red Flag, y'all. So I gotta I gotta keep the red flags in there. <laughs> I whip out the green ones every once in a while when they need to be whipped out, but most times they don't. Need, they they can't be whipped out, y'all. They just can't. Um, but yeah, shout out to her for sending that story in, y'all. If you have a story, we're going live again on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram on Thursday of this week, y'all. Thursday um, at nine p.m. Eastern time, six p.m. Pacific time. We're going live again on Thursday. So you have, we were, I forgot what topic we're going to do. It will, it will, it will, it will, it'll come to us. If you have a story that you want to send in. You can send it in to waving the red flag show at gmail.com. Or if you have a voicemail that you want to send in, because we're going to do voicemails here in a few minutes. Um, the voicemail number is 855-432-5637. If y'all listen to me on um, TikTok, hop over to the YouTube channel. And like I said, we have that going across the screen right now and whatnot for y'all to take a look at and check out y'all. So thank y'all. Okay, so let's see. We'll get to some voicemails. Um, all right, here's the, our first one. Is there any insight that you can give me in regards to kleptos? Um, my ex-partner, what he does is will come into the house, take things um, when I'm not here, um, hide them, and I found certain things or items that was taken of mine. 
um, that was placed around his apartment that he moved into uh, after discarding me. I just wanted to get your insight on, you know, narcissistic people who take things or claim things as theirs, including you or parts of your property or possessions. Um, I get a sense of or feeling that if they they feel as if they can take something from you, a, a personal possession of yours, that that gives them some type of direct personal control. Um. So when you're dealing with, so this person said, y'all, if y'all listen on TikTok, um, got to join on the YouTube channel to listen to the voicemails and whatnot, because the voice, the YouTube channel name is the same as TikTok, y'all, is at Mental Illness. Um, but yeah. Your property is my property. We got a kleptomaniac, narcissistic person, and an ex, an ex. First of all, you got to call the police on Yeah, if they come into your house stealing stuff, that sounds like something like this, like reverse Santa Claus. It's like they come in and take, they come in and take gifts and scurry it through the chimney. You know what I'm saying? What's what, 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 what belongs to you is like your property is mine, but what my was mine is mine. There's no equal sharing here in this situation, y'all. Like, seriously, jump over from TikTok. Well, thank you for coming over from TikTok, y'all. Jump over to YouTube if y'all on TikTok to hear the voicemails and whatnot. Seriously. Um, I appreciate all the, the, the stuff y'all sending in as well. Um, but yeah, you have to call, y'all, you have to put a stop to it because they don't stop. They, like, the, the klepto part is probably could be an addiction. A lot of narcissistic people, y'all, have addictive personalities. Like, and sometimes they are still in to fulfill that addictive need. And whatnot, you know what I mean? They're they're coming in to, to steal to fulfill that need. So it's just like they're gonna keep stealing. Why wouldn't why wouldn't they? Especially if you if you haven't called the police, it's not stealing. It's just it's borrowing with a no percent interest rate and no promise or note to pay back. They're not gonna pay you back. You know. I have a question about this actually. So what what about um, when they give you things and tell you to keep them when you know like that things are starting to like kind of fall apart and they're starting to like give you things to keep to take with you. Like like a t shirt you used to like or yeah so that type of stuff right there could be an, an anchor in the relationship so if that you put that shirt on you think about this person that gave you the shirt you know and also if it's not a shirt or something like that they can come back and try to get it like hey I need it they they always have an excuse if the, if a narcissistic person leaves stuff behind leaves stuff behind y'all or gives you a parting gift or tells you something like. I'll always be there for you. That means they're not going anywhere. It's not, that means that they are trying to anchor themselves into your life in some way, shape, or form. You know, you might be leaving me physically, but I can reach out to you before because of this. Why do you keep calling me? You have my shirt that I gave you. I need my shirt back. You see what I'm saying? You have my you have my CDs or whatever it is, you know, my floppy disk and whatnot. Mm-hmm. It's just a reason. We have so, some questions too. I'm gonna throw them up real quick. All right. So we have a question. Talk about the difference between mirroring or copying compared to a regular person who likes to try to build rapport. What's the intent? What's the intent? Because you said a regular person. I don't know. So I don't know what regular is. Y'all, y'all got to start, you know, regular. What's regular? You know, not narcissistic. No, there's so many people who are not narcissists that are, wouldn't consider themselves regular. There's newer diversion. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but what is the intent? Because if a person is mirroring you to manipulate you, then there's a reason behind that. You see what I'm saying? If I'm mirroring you to manipulate you, it's because I don't have my own personality. I don't think you like me. I don't think my original, I, I don't think my original self is worthy of your love or your care or your affection. So if I don't think I'm worthy of that, then I'm going to, uh, then I need to be you. You know, a I guess a non-narcissistic person would be doing that just to get you to, to get you to be interested in them. But the intent is kind of still the same. I just feel like be you, you know, be you. Intent matters, but also be you. <laughs> Flabby disc. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so do narcissists pretend to be dumb about things so they don't have to make any effort? So okay, I don't know why I couldn't hear you. So, so it says, do narcissists pretend to be dumb about things so they don't have to make any effort? Uh, yeah. So sometimes that's called a lot of times this record is called a uh, weaponized incompetence. It's just like, oh, I don't know how to do. This. A lot of times, this happens in the household, y'all. It's gonna sound bad, but like they'll they'll, they'll say something like, "I just don't know how to how to operate the dishwasher. You just do it so much better than me. Why, why don't you do it? You know, 
I don't know how to wash clothes. You just you just wash them better than me. Just, just, can you do it? You just you make them smell better. You know, it's stuff like that. I, I wish I knew how to can do I, it. Yes, weaponized incompetence is a real thing that a lot of narcissistic, toxic people use to kind of keep themselves held down to keep you doing things. It, it, it also keeps you frustrated because they do if they do stuff, they do low effort stuff like easy things. They 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 do it to a, of lesser quality. Then you'll get mad and take it over. That's what they do, y'all. I wish I I wish I knew how to mop as good as you. <laughs> I don't know. The vacuum cleaner just responds better to you. It doesn't like the vacuum cleaner doesn't like me. The Roomba doesn't like me at all. You know, just whatever it is, y'all. So they also do that. They do that in that space. So that happens. All right, where can, are we? Can you hear me now? Or is it my yeah, I hear you now. Yeah. So okay. where are we safely? What's a safe state? The safe state is in, inside of you. Yeah, that's the only safe place. You have to. I feel like if you build yourself up, you can become narc proof or narc at least narc repellent. You know what I mean? It's just like narc. It's just like if you have boundaries that you are not willing to alter or change because some of y'all have boundaries that if you get somebody that you're physically attracted to, your boundary your boundaries can fly out the window. You know, what I mean? you get a you know a handsome a handsome person a beautiful person. You're just like. I had this boundary of no clapping cheeks on the first night, but you know, goddamn it, I need a. I just, I think I'm just breaking board. I just, I don't know. It's something about you. Keep your boundaries in place, y'all. Just keep it in place, because if if you don't have boundaries because somebody's attractive, you lose. Why? You're not gonna be safe anywhere. It doesn't matter where you go. You can go to you know just a deserted island. You have to be by yourself. <laughs> but imagine, you have to, your boundaries are your safe place, y'all. There's no particularly safe state uh, unless you're going to live out there in the in the mountains somewhere like North Dakota. But I've also I've talked to people in North Dakota. It's like, yeah, we we live. He moved me to North Dakota. We live 12 hours away from lo the, the local Walmart. Got to walk. You know, <laughs> it's just like stuff like that. So um, what is up with them going back to their exes? It's a lot of times, y'all, it's easier to go back than it is to go forward, you know? If you're dealing with a narcissist or a toxic person, it's easier to go backwards than it is to go forward. I can go. It's easier easier for me to go back into an old relationship sometimes than it is to try to establish something new. You know, I gotta put energy. I gotta put energy into love bombing you, getting to know you, all of this stuff. I gotta do all of this stuff when I can just go back to my ex who think I've who thinks I've changed because I'm they see me treating you good. That's easy right there. You know. Lee, I see you treat your new boo better than me. You, I'm just not happy here, though. I can treat you just as good. Just take me back. Go back to you. Gotcha. I ain't did that to new. You know what I'm saying? It just it's easy to go back sometimes because you're there's already rapport established. So just watch out in those situations, y'all. Seriously. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the voicemails now. Here we go. All right. My narc and I have been going back and forth for a good four years. Um, three of them. I've taken him back. He disappeared for the simplest little thing. Okay, now, so this time around now, I've just remained silent. I mean, you're right. like I'm giving him the silent treatment. I haven't responded to any of the crazy shit that he's, you know, accusing me of or, you know, blaming me for as usual. Um, my thing is that how long should I keep it up? You know, should I just I mean, I'm I'm actually done because I'm tired of the back and forth. It's just wasted time, and he's always shutting down for something so simple. And I feel like he uses it as an excuse to go around and screw whoever he wants to screw. I don't mind even being friends with him, you know. But if it won't happen, it don't happen. I just want to know, like, you know, me staying muted. I mean, is that a good idea? Clapping cheeks. Y'all, <laughs> is in all sincerity, y'all, don't be. If you have a narcissist, if you feel like, if you feel the need to watch our show or to follow me on TikTok or Instagram, YouTube, don't be friends with that person. Why would y'all want to be friends with an ex who treated you badly in a relationship? Like, whose causes some narcissistic people, y'all, yeah, they do cause arguments on purpose. So they can go out here and sleep with somebody else, and it's not technically not cheating, 
or if you if it is cheating you caused me to do this because we were arguing remember like we were arg- you were arguing to me about macaroni and cheese and it just got me so angry that i had to go get on tinder and sleep with the, sleep with this other person you know what i'm saying and it's somehow your fault like well you in your mind you're like well i did burn the mac and cheese so damn it that's my fault i'll do better next time so it's up to y'all to stop these people from coming back into your life, y'all. Being, being realistic, because the more you go back, I'm just telling you, the more they think you are okay with those behaviors. They just do. They think you're okay with it. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they think you're okay? Don't be friends. Don't be mute. Because if you be, if you, you know, if you are mute, they think you're just being mute and silent about it is the same thing as just saying yes. You might as well just say yes. Do it. Get go do it. You know, because it's the same thing. It's the same. It makes the same difference. Just in that space, because if you the more you go back, the more you put up with it, the more they think it's okay. And then typically, because you put up with it, the more you put up with y'all, the worse they look at you as. Like they don't look at you, they don't look at you as a ride or die. I think some people think if you stay in these relationships, if you go back to it, you're gonna prove your worth to this some person, to this person somehow, some way, shape, or form. But they don't look at you as like that, y'all. They look at you as just easily manipulated. They look at you as easily taken advantage of, and they get rid of you for somebody else. They don't pick you. There's no payoff. You know, just because you put up with a lot of bullshit does not mean there's going to be some type of payoff for you in the end with this person. You mean, there's no payoff. It's like, we're in love. He's going to pick. No, if you get, yeah, even if you get picked, what's the, what's the, what's the victory here? If you get picked by a person who just cheated on you multiple times, they finally decide to settle down for, what does your red flag gold medal say? What does it say? What does your gold medal say? First place picked a lying cheating manipulator, settled in life. You're gonna have a lot of regret, y'all. It's gonna be, it's gonna be oof. Woo! You'll be sad as hell at the end. Be real. <clears throat> okay, here's our next. Hi, ladies. Thank you for everything that you do. Uh, my ex narc was pretended to be a CIA, DOS, DOJ, um, officer, intelligence officer he has for over 17 years now, and we were together for three years. Um, everything came to light when I found him with another woman on our anniversary and then posted something on Facebook where so far 14 other women have came out from all over the U.S. Um, so I've been having to work with all of these agencies in regards to him and he would use typical keywords that are used to describe narcissists um which i've found very odd most of the time i have found only people only describing those that have had a horrid childhood um my ex narc actually was an only child and was put on a pedestal by his parents. I mean, he could do no wrong. It didn't matter. And now he's grandiose. He's a public personality. Women throw him, throw themselves at him. And so what do you think about the narcissists that are actually put on a pedestal by their parents? So, yeah. So this narcissistic person, y'all, for on you on TikTok, y'all need to go YouTube so I can hear the voicemails. Um, he pretended to be an agent for 17 years. Mm-hmm. So he pretended to be a Secret Service agent or FBI or agent for 17 years and was clapping cheeks all over the United States of America, apparently. Like literally had a harem across the country. And it is insane. And he, she said he didn't have childhood trauma, he had childhood entitlement, which can make some narcissistic people actually absolutely absolutely be worse people you know it's not always trauma that creates narcissists y'all it could be super entitlement with no boundaries and this woman just say like even when people pretty much that person right there is not going to ever stop doing what he's doing because he's like women he's a he's a he's a he's a public personality now and women just throw themselves at him so why would he stop doing what he's doing y'all why you see what I'm saying? He's always he's always gotten what he wants. His mom and dad have entitled him his whole life, and now people are just throwing ass and titties at him. So why would he stop doing what he's doing? Why would he stop? Just being realistic, y'all. Why would they stop? Like, I just want them to stop. Why would they stop? It just, just people just throwing cheeks at him. Why? Why? You know what I mean? 
You getting cheeks, you get money. Why would they stop being who they are? It doesn't make sense. It's like it's like literally playing the lottery. If I play the same numbers every single time, if I play three, two, one, zero, and I win the lottery every time, why the hell would I go up there and play one, two, three, zero? Why would I do that? Why would I change the why would I change the lottery code if I'm continuously winning the lottery because nobody holds me accountable? Or if you even if somebody holds me accountable, there's always some other cheeks to clap that are just other cheeks willy, willfully what ready to be clapped, y'all. Like seriously. People like that don't get better because it's always, especially to the celebrities with money, they're never going to, why, yeah, why would they stop doing what they're doing? As long as there's somebody that's there to enable their behaviors, they're going to keep getting worse. You know, why would they get better? And don't say love. Y'all, if somebody types the word love in here, I'm, I'm going to get furious. <laughs> don't say it. Don't say love. Don't, like, oh, but love, Lee, love, love ain't enough, y'all. You're going to love them right into a, uh, an STD. Cause you know you're like, well, he's cheated on me forty times, but I'm gonna be the one to he picks, and then you get you get an STD. You know what I'm saying? Love is not enough. Just being realistic right here, y'all. It doesn't even matter. Like what I'm saying, love. Like they, they're not gonna stop. People like that don't stop. They don't get better because why would they? Because forgiveness is a thing. You can even forgive people to treat you badly if you want to. Like you can forgive them. You don't have to reconcile with them. You know, I think somebody's like. You can forgive whoever you want to. You don't have to reconcile with them and keep fucking them. You know, that's why it'd be blowing my mind. Just like, I know you cheated on me 40 times. You gave me an STD. At least I got rid of it. But here's some here's some more ass. Why would they change their behaviors, y'all? Like, why? I'm just being realistic. And I know it sounds bad. Like, Lee, you can you victim. Like, no, why would they change? Like, being, being realistic, y'all. Why would they change those behaviors? If you were playing the same numbers every single time and winning the lottery, why would you change the numbers that you're playing? Why would you change those, y'all? No. Makes sense. Okay. I think I, I'm pretty sure we haven't done this one yet, but we may have done this one on another show. Hey, new people. Just a warning. Okay, here we go. Hi. Um, thank you for all your information that you've given to us um, online. But I did have a question. Um, my husband, I guess you're going to say considered soon to be ex, um, just played that one, right? Yeah, I heard, I heard that. One. Yeah, I was like, but <laughs> I was like, the voice. All right, so that's the that was our last voicemail. Um, this voice, this last voicemail, y'all. So, y'all, if you if you're watching on TikTok, hop over to YouTube. Like I said, we're reading the comments and stuff like that on YouTube. So I'm reading them on TikTok too, but yeah. So Ravinder says, my narcissist father and I haven't spoken for years, but he still talks very poorly about me to others. Will he ever stop? No, it won't stop because. It won't. Probably, it might not stop that he's on his deathbed. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of shame associated with you not talking to him. So he has to make you. He has to put you down in order to make himself feel better. He has to put himself down to make himself feel like he's the the right decision has been made with the no contact. Like we're not talking because of you. You see what I'm saying? We're not talking because of of my ungrateful ass son. He's an ungrateful little fuck. You know what I mean? Just whatever it is. He's, just, he's talking trash. You know what I mean? Somebody said my mom does that. Um, do narcissists actively groom people to make you the perfect supply? Uh, I would say yeah, for a long. I mean, for a lot of people, yeah, especially younger people. If like a lot, some some narcissists like to target younger people or people who don't have a lot of relationship experience. You can be older with not a lot with not a lot of relationship experience. What I mean by you being married for twenty years and you get back out to the real world and you're like, you've been married, you have married experience. But relationship experience out here in the real world is a little different. You ain't married with one person, you know. So yeah, they will groom you and try to try to mold you and consider you malleable to make you groom you into whoever they want you to be. You know, it happens a lot. Um, so when I met mine, I wasn't stable or fin I wasn't stable mentally or financially stable. Wonder if I should try again with him when I get on my feet. Why would you do that? Why would you set yourself up like that? I feel like this. I just feel like you want to come back to him on a different level to see if he treats you differently. Go to somebody. He don't deserve you. If he treated you badly when you were down, he's not gonna treat you good. When he's not gonna treat you better when you're up. You know, if anything, he's gonna. If anything, he's gonna try to take you back down to where you were when he first met you. You know. So if they can't treat you good, like people treat you, what they treat people treat you how they feel about you. You know, your money, your success, your status. Didn't stop him. He's still gonna treat you the same way, y'all. Just being realistic. Forty years. Woo. My ex coworker was a narc, 
and tried to ruin my life through the smear campaign. Why? Jealousy. Uh, you said coworker. Oh, so I don't know if there's a relationship going on there. Yeah, coworker relationships are weird, y'all. Especially if you're not sleeping with them, there's typically typically a jealousy component associated with that. You know, or you're you're moving faster up the corporate corporate ladder than they are. It's always something weird that's going on behind the scenes to make them feel a certain type of way. Where they need to pull you down, like they need to teach you a lesson and pull you down a notch and whatnot, y'all. It just happens like that sometimes. So they will absolutely try to ruin your career to try to get a, to try to step up in theirs and whatnot. So to, so do a so do a narcissist feel like the physical cheating is worse or emotionally cheating? So so to a narcissist feel so to a narcissist is physical cheating worse or emotionally? So yeah, it really just depends on the person. Like. Some people consider emotional cheating worse because you're telling somebody you love them and you care about them and you're sharing, you're sharing your deepest, darkest secrets with that person and your your wants and needs with that person. Some people, but you're not sleeping with them. But some people think physical cheating is better because y'all, you know, slapping, you know, clapping cheeks, bumping ugly. What do you want to go? You know, y'all doing all of that stuff in that space. So it, it just happens. It really just depends, y'all. You know, I think both can be equally as toxic or equally as bad for the relationship. Because if you're emotionally cheating and you're connected to somebody like that, it just tends to lead to the physical stuff. You're going to end up going to the other way. So. How can I convince my son's dad he needs to get help? He's clearly a narc. He's lost nine jobs this year alone because he always feels like his boss is disrespectful. You can so in that place, in that space right there, that, like and people hate when I say this because I'm diagnosed. There is nothing you can do for that person right there, because it, it it's kind of like he's been enabled by somebody always hiring his ass. You see what I'm saying? In this position right here, it's not even new women or new men that is enabling him. It's the people who keep hiring him. It's just like, I got fired. I lost nine jobs. This year. What do you put in your resume? You know, I'm pretty sure he's not listing, listing all of those job losses on his resume and whatnot. But you, this is the point where I hear what he has to be able to hold himself accountable and see what is actually going on behind the scenes, y'all. Just being realistic. Like, there's nothing you can personally do to help him. Because if you're paying his bills or you're doing all this stuff for him, you're just in that you it just look like you're enabling his behaviors to continue. Oh, you lost another job? I got you this month. You see what I'm saying? saying? So I he might be going to get fired on purpose because it's hard, y'all. It, oh, it's it's hard to lose it's hard to get nine. Like, whew. all right. We still live together, and she keeps this new woman on FaceTime all day long around myself and my kids. Uh there right there is, you know. Show, showing you what's going on, showing you how happy I am, showing you how fast I can move on without you. So showing you how good I can do it without you. That's, you, should, you, you shouldn't you should broke up with me. You shouldn't have left me. We shouldn't have broke up, whatever. But that face on shit, yeah, I'm making this. All right. <laughs> don't be like me, but I'm making the same. Like you. You know what I mean? Just like, yeah, but don't do that, y'all. So just be very weary of a situation like that. Why do narcissists, why don't narcissists spend time with their kids? I mean, some do, y'all. Some only spend time with the kids, you know, but the ones who don't, don't. The narcissistic people who don't spend time with their kids typically don't care about their kids, y'all. That's not true for every narcissist, but typically the ones who don't take care of their kids don't care about the kids. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody asked on TikTok, how do you get under the skin of a rich narcissist? You leave them alone, y'all. You can't. What you gonna do? Get pregnant by them? Take some money from them? Like you, you gotta leave, to get under their skin. You have to cut off access to you if they're still trying to pursue you. You know what I mean? So that money thing, y'all. Da -da -da -da. Hope for the hopeless. How did you finally accept that you're a narcissist? I've been with a narcissist, and he calls me a narcissist. He has cheated for three years, but never admit. So that person right there is not going. Why? Why would he admit to anything? Because you say he's cheated for three years. He's going to cheat th three years down the road. It's going to be six years. This is going to add up. You'll be on her, you, you'll be on her saying, I had a 12-year, he had a 12-year affair. You know what I mean? That person is not, there's no, there's no, what, what word are you? I did a video the other day. I actually did it yesterday. I did a video yesterday. But there's no incentive for him to change his behaviors or to admit anything. There's no incentive for that person to change his behaviors, to admit something's going on, to admit he's wrong or anything. Where's the incentive there? If he can keep cheating, if he can keep doing what he wants to do, there's no incentive for him to change his behaviors because his needs are being met. You know, 
his needs are being met. My own emotional, mental needs were not being met when I when my wife left. So the incentive for me to change was, was for me to be better for myself. You know, I know a lot of people attach their self worth to whether a narcissist know whether a narcissist goes and gets help or not. It's way less about you than you think, y'all. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody said, "Are you really a narcissist if you're self aware?" Yes, uh, yeah. The di the diagnosis exists for a reason. You know, that's what I tell people. The diagnosis exists for a reason. Mm -mm -mm. I'm speaking out here. How do you know if a narc is jealous of you? Uh, <laughs> they're always jealous of people, y'all. It's just like you don't, you might not know by their behaviors, but narcissists are always jealous of you, y'all. If you have something that they don't have, even if it's something that they themselves can get, they're jealous of you because you had it before them. It just, they're always going to be jealous of y'all. It's always a lack. Mm -mm. Is therapy difficult work? Yes, y'all. Therapy is very difficult. There's a real question, Lee. I, I gave you, did I give you a real answer? I thought I gave you a real answer. Uh, boop, 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 boop. You have any, is that the last one? Yeah, I think so. Okay. okay. Mm -mm -mm. Find the joy in the side of treatment. It'll piss them off. Yes, y'all. Mm -mm -mm. So I think that might be the last question, y'all. So uh, do we have anything else on the agenda? Um, Let's see. We do have the video of the week. Uh, My favorite video of the week. But, uh, let's see. Jessica's so, favorite video of the week on YouTube, y'all. So check out YouTube. Right. Oh my goodness, sorry I'm late, class. Um, no, no, I wasn't late. You, you, you guys were early. All of you guys were early. Good job being early. Um, gaslight amongst yourselves until I get ready. Excuse, excuse me, Mr. Narcissist. Uh, you want us to gaslight amongst ourselves? Like what? Huh? Who, who said anything about gaslighting? I, I never said that. Um, time for a pop quiz, though. Excuse me, Mr. Narcissist, are you are you giving us a pop quiz because because you were late? I was not late. You guys were early. Matt, first question goes to you. What do you do when your partner catches you cheating? Okay, you you admit that you were wrong. You apologize and you promise to make things. No, no, no. What? No. You in the red shirt. You answer the question. Okay. Um. You ask for forgiveness. You promise that it'll never happen again. What? No, this is narcissism 101. Where's all this empathy coming from? You in the black shirt. Okay, let me ask you a question. How did they catch me cheating? Hmm. Went through your phone while you were in the shower. So first off, you want to make a big deal about going through your phone, about them invading your privacy. Second of all, you can handle this. You can just ask me straight up. You don't, you don't trust me enough to wait till I'm dry to question my authenticity, to question my love for you. Interesting. I, I, hey, I feel manipulated. F finish it off. To finish them off, you want to start crying and making a scene and not tell tell them that you don't want to be here anymore. Just in, insinuate that you're going to go see God. Whew. You're gonna be my star student right there. I look, I look, I want to forgive you for them. Thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Narcissus. I, look, I want to be just like you and be in your position when I get older. Huh, so you want to take my place? Oh, that that A, that A you just you just earned is looking is looking quite effish right now. Since since you're about to devalue them, I can look. I'll be your new source of validation, your new source of supply in this classroom. Hmm, a new star pupil. Hmm. <laughs> like that, Narc One Hundred One. New star pupil. You know, that's what it was, and I also had this shirt on. I'm a wear shirt. <laughs> you see, y'all noticed that the uh, the the uh, the stu the main student had on the I'm aware shirt. He was aware of what was going on. He was aware of the manipulation, the gaslighting, and stuff like that, y'all. He was aware of it. All the other good jazz and whatnot. So I think that might be it right here, y'all, for this this show right here. Um, we do another one. Like I said, if y'all listen to this on TikTok, we do a live show on Thursday evenings as well. Thursday evening, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, waving the red flag show, y'all. On Thursday show, we'll be doing another red flag giveaway. Um, uh, and also, where is it at? Also, I got to do this too. Damn it. Give me one second, y'all. Well, while, while you're looking for that, um, and if you join the channel, become a member, we're going to start doing after shows pretty soon. And we're going to, uh, he's going to do a one on one for the members only. We're going to pull somebody in to do a one on one for the members. Yep. One on one uh, for the member for like members only live and whatnot. Like I said, doing a give doing a self love journal giveaway. Lee Hammock, I love me a self love journal. It's on. It's available on Amazon. If you see it on Amazon, the 
cover design. Nah, I just realized how fire this cover is. Um, like a little notebook, a little notepad torn off with little affirmations and whatnot. I love it. Um, but yeah, join the YouTube channel, y'all. The YouTube membership, like I said, you're here to help as many people as we possibly can, reach as many people, and entertain you at the same time, y'all. We try to keep this entertaining. Uh, and like I said, thank y'all so much for joining in today. If you listen to this on TikTok, follow the YouTube channel. Like I said, get lot live or on YouTube and whatnot. So y'all be safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you Thursday, 9 p.m. Waving the red flag with your favorite self-aware narcissist, Lee